SIADH stands for Syndrome of Inappropriate Antidiuretic Hormone. What is a syndrome? Well, a syndrome is a list of multiple findings that define a single disease process. And the syndrome of antidiuretic hormone, we see fluid retention, serum hypoosmolality, dilutional hyponatremia, and this means that we have a free water excess, hypochloremia, and concentrated urine. And this is in the presence of normal renal function. So remember, ADH or vasopressin caused the kidneys to retain free water. And SIADH causes excess free water retention. So there's fluid retention, which is retained free water, hypoosmolality due to retained free water, hyponatremia due to retained free water, hypochloremia, concentrated urine. And all this is because we have an increase in free water in the body. And again, this is all in the presence of normal renal function. Tumors can make inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. So SIADH can be caused by a tumor. Tumors can make a lot of things, and ADH is a simple molecule and easy to make by mistake. SIADH can be due to tumors of the lung and the pancreas. It can be caused by lymphomas, leukemias, tumors of the thymus gland, prostate, and colorectal cancer. Drugs can also cause excess ADH secretion. And neurologic injury can cause excess ADH secretion as well. So signs and symptoms of SIADH include hyponatremia, which is low serum sodium. The sodium may fall below 130. In this case, the patient may present with muscle cramps and weakness. Low urinary output is another symptom that the patient may have. Now remember, normal output is about 1,500 mLs a day. This would be equivalent to about 60 mLs per hour, or 500 mLs in an eight-hour shift. Or if we were counting a 12-hour shift, it would be about 800 mLs. Other symptoms include increased body weight. However, edema is not often present due to the low sodium levels because the fluid shifts from the extracellular space inside the cell. If the hyponatremia becomes even more severe and the sodium drops below 125, the patient may have vomiting, abdominal cramps, muscle twitching, and seizures. And if the sodium continues to decrease because of this free water excess, it can lead to cerebral edema and coma. So management of SIADH includes treating the underlying cause of the disorder. We want to keep the patient on a fluid restriction of less than 1,000 mLs per day. We want to monitor strict intake and output and measure daily weights. We also want to provide frequent oral hygiene because remember, we're limiting the amount of fluid that the patient is allowed to drink and the oral mucous membranes may become dry. Um, the patient may be allowed to have hard candy and ice chips. And we want to be observing for any neurological problems. Um, often we may put these patients on seizure precautions. We also want to make sure that we're monitoring bowel function because a fluid restriction um, can quickly lead to constipation. So treatment of SIADH includes some drugs. Lithium is one and um, declomycin is another. These drugs block the effect of ADH on the renal tubules, allowing for more free water diuresis and more dilute urine. 
Next, we're going to talk about diabetes insipid.